In this VTM we're going to look at skin morph, which is a way of redefining uh, joints which are skinned badly or maybe joints which are impossible to skin correctly. So in this case we're going to look at the elbow joint and you can see that in its deformed position uh, the elbow is not looking very realistic at all. Uh, so we need to remodel that. So what we can do with skin morph is we can put in a effectively a morph target which is defined uh, by the angle of a joint so it will morph more towards that joint uh, when the morph, uh, when the angle is there so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to move this into the bent position uh, and I'm going to clone it as a copy not as an instance uh, and then on the clone I'm going to delete the turbo smooth and then I'm going to collapse the skin modifier uh, and that will enable me to move it away and this is what I'm going to use as my morph target now the entire thing needs to be used for the morph target because obviously the entire model is being morphed but what I'm actually going to do is I'm only going to look at the uh, area around the elbow so if I uh, select that probably maybe out to there yeah that'll do uh, and then I'm not going to um, delete the rest or anything like that when I find it I'm just going to use uh, hide unselected down here and that will hide all the polys that I'm not working on different to the hide unselected you get in the right click here because that will hide objects and this one is only about hiding sub objects now I'm going to isolate that and I'm going to remodel that to a more sensible shape so at this point uh, it's probably a good idea for me to go into high speed so you don't get numbed with boredom while I, while I do this So I've remodeled the shape of the elbow now. Let's unisolate. Right. So I'm going to apply a skin morph modifier now to the main mesh. You only need one skin morph modifier for all of the skin morphs that you want to include. Uh, don't assume that you need to add in one for every joint because it's not the case. And what I need to do now is pick a bone to add into my bone list. Um, I don't need to include all the bones like I do in the skin modifier. I only need to include the bones which actually drive the skin morph themselves. So in this case, I'm going to pick the uh, forearm bone here and then hide the layer again. And you can see now that I've got one arm bone listed in the uh, parameters rollout there and it's got a yellow line to represent it uh, in the skin morph. Now, I can apply as many morph targets as I want for this bone, and I do that by moving the arm into the bent position. It's important that when you add the bones, they're in the default position, and then when you create the morph target, that it's in the bent position. So now I'm going to click Create Morph, and I'm going to call it Elbow Correction. And you'll see Elbow Correction is now listed underneath the bone and it's in the 100% position and as I move it back down to the out position you can see it then goes to zero uh, and then it goes back to 100% in the position where I created the morph so that's quite an important thing now some of the uh, model has now become highlighted in orange these are the parts of the model which it considers to be the vertices that are most important for this morph target to work uh, so what we need to do is to actually change that. 
So first of all, I'm going to just select the vertices that I want, which are the vertices basically that make up that shape there. So with edit selected, I'm just going to go in here and draw a window around all the verts that I need there. Uh, and then I will invert the selection with control I to select all other verts and then click the remove verts button. And what that does is it takes them out of the equation so those won't be included in the skin morph. Then I can do control I again to invert the selection again and go back to what I originally had. And down here is where I add in my morph target. So where it says external mesh and it says none at the moment, that's where I go and select the external mesh. I need to turn edit off, otherwise you get some spurious results sometimes. And click reload only selected verts and then go where it says none, click the none button and then choose the the mesh and you'll see that this has now changed and morphed to match the remodeling that I did before. So now what should happen is as I animate this back you'll see the morph come into play. Now that gizmo that it puts over the top is pretty annoying so I'm just going to go down here to hide it where it says show current angle. Just turn that off and it means that we can see the movement of the elbow as it bends up. Okay, and I think you'll agree, even though my modelling skills are rather poor, that that's a more realistic elbow bend than the one we had before. So, the last thing we do is we decide at what point that morph target starts evolving. Okay, so at some point around about there, maybe, um, is about where I want my arm to start distorting, because that's the point where the elbow is going to uh, actually start folding in on itself. So I move the animation into that point and then I change my influence angle down until it stops moving and you can see it stops moving at around about 50 degrees on this example. So it will remain unmorphed until that position and then the morph target will take over. Okay, in fact, I think for that one I want it to start a bit earlier. So I'll just move it earlier, increase the angle until I get some movement again. There we go, and then my elbow will distort accordingly. There we go, and you can do that on any and every joint in the body, uh, and you can change the angle of influence so that several morphs can be used at once, and you can actually have whole lists of them down here. Okay, so now rather than doing that on both elbows and trying to mimic it and make it exactly the same, um, I'm going to mirror that across. So first of all, what I need to do is come up here uh, and add in the other bone on the other side, which is the same. So let's pick the bone, go to layers, choose that, and then just choose my forearm bone again. You can see it's come up because of the little orange line, and it's listed in here. Uh, and then I come down here and show mirror plane. Now this is a, very similar to the skinning mirror except it's done in slightly different order so I need to change my mirror plane direction so that it's in the cor correct place and then I change the mirror offset value uh, to be in the middle. Now it's not quite as precise because I can only go up in steps of one so I might need to put in uh, extra values there just to try and make it as accurate as possible. You can see at the moment there's nothing underneath that bone at all. If I then come down and click paste mirror and then come back up here you'll see that now there is an elbow correction on the other one as well and that will be an exact mirrored opposite. And you can do that for as many joints as you like across the body. Right, I want to just take you through the uh, skin morph targets that I set up uh, so you can see what I've done. Uh, so we'll look at these one at a time and have a look at the elbow one first, uh, which is the one you've seen. But what I've done now is I've just animated them. As I, as I created them, I just used auto key to make them animated. So you can see the difference between what I've done on the elbow. And this, this is actually redone from the one you've just seen. So... Uh, it doesn't have any of that weird kind of bunching up that happens there on the example you've just seen and all it does is reshape the elbow a little bit like so 
uh, and then I will show you the shoulder I've done in two parts. Uh, the first one is the down by the side position and the red areas are the areas that I've actually included in the morph target. Okay, so that's the skinned position. Now I've just sorted that out a little bit to make it a little bit more rounded there. And then I've also got a morph target for the shrug position of the shoulder here. Very similar. So that's skinned. The morph target is just pulled round a bit and made look a bit tidier. I'll show you how those work together on the morph target in a minute. The neck, I had a problem with the back of the neck. The rest of the neck worked out alright, but you can see there the back of, back of the neck collapsed a little bit. So I did a morph target just to pull that in. And also the stomach collapsed a little bit, so that is the skinned position. And you can see she's too thin there. So I just used that just to bulge the stomach out a bit when she bends forward. Then the thigh movements. There's a big crease in there when she lifts her leg up, which I just lifted out with uh, a morph target like so. There's the back of the thigh there. When she puts her leg back like that again, there's a big crease in there where the thigh and the bum fold in a bit on each other. So again, I've just lifted that out to make it look a bit more realistic. Uh, this one was quite problematic because it's, su it's such a huge leg lift. You can see there's a huge amount of overlapping there before the morph target. Uh, and what, watch what I've done because this the flesh on the thigh is going to have to move down and the, and the flesh on the bum has to move out to accommodate uh, the position. Okay, so I've just remodeled that. And as it moves out, I've also made it get wider a bit because uh, one thing that can't happen is you can't really have a, a change of volume uh, of the leg otherwise it looks a bit too weird in fact I think I'll just show you that just select the polys and hide unselected so if we look at this in the unanimated position obviously you can see there's a huge amount of overlap there uh, but I'm really looking at the cross section of the thigh and just as you animate it's trying to make it so that although it changes shape it stays a constant volume uh, there. What you don't want is you don't want it to look like it inflates when it operates. Okay, so that's that one. And then the knee joint here. Uh, there's quite a lot of overlapping going on there. And the knee joint creases up in there too high. So I've just pulled the knee joint out. And again, I've moved the flesh and the boot forward there uh, to accommodate for the fact that they would push against the thigh. Uh, as, it, as it moves. Uh, and that gives you an overview of the morph targets I've used. Let's just have a look at them quickly on the main body. You can see here that I've got quite a few bones in the same skin morph modifier and under this one for example there's actually two morph target values and it's the right arm not the left arm. So you can see shoulder fix there has gone up to from 0 to 100 percent. There, 0 up to 100 uh, and then shrug fix is still zero, but as I move that up, it moves into the new morph target. And you see shoulder fix has gone down to zero, because you don't want to add these two morph targets together. Uh, and the way I've got around that is by having very small angles of influence on them. And it's the same procedure, you just turn the angle of influence up or down accordingly. So shoulder fix there has got an influence angle of 29 degrees. Uh, and shrug fix has got 28 degrees. That's given you enough variation there so they don't overlap as morph targets. Uh, let's also have a look at the uh, spine ones. The bending backwards wasn't too bad, but the bending forwards uh, was quite bad. And if I turn off the uh, skin morph there, you can see she changes shape quite noticeably. Uh, you can you can actually see her get thinner as, as she bends over. She's still a bit thinner even with the skin morph, but it just bulks it out a bit and makes it a bit more uh, realistic. And the back of the neck one, there we go, with the morph target. And without it there, you can see there's a real cavity behind the neck. So it's just a little fix there to to fix that. And the leg ones in the up position now, you can see that looks quite realistic. The knee and the thigh both bend much more realistically there. You can see as well that I've timed the morph so as the thigh lifts up it pushes into the stomach at, the, at that moment so the stomach movement is there a little bit as well. Okay. Uh, for the backward movement of the thigh uh, really it's just a case of making that so there's no uh, 
big crease in there without the skin morph you can see there's a huge crease in there with uh, the flesh is all kind of squashed up and to the side again uh, getting rid of that crease and building that shape in there um, and I think that's it so hopefully that's given you a good overview of the kind of skin morphs that you might want to do.